The Super Buddy meter has an aluminum enclosure. It has rubber side caps that provide a nice feel in the hand as well as absorb shock when dropped or bumped. It has neoprene gaskets between the end panels for keeping it weather tight. The shoulder strap connects to these top loops. The top of the meter has a signal input connector which happens to have a field replaceable barrel. So as that wears out in the future, unscrew it and put in a new one. The bottom view of the Super Buddy shows where the AC connects to the meter for charging its battery. It shows the another input connector that allows you to connect your meter to the IRD for troubleshooting the IRD or to allow signal to run through the meter to the LNB. The port labeled PC is where you connect a personal computer to the meter for downloading upgrades or for using the SAT monitor program. The jack to the right is for vehicle charger so 12 volts DC for charging the battery to the meter. The front panel is a smooth vinyl face with large easy to push buttons. The lower left button is the main on off button. Immediately above that is the backlight button for backlighting the display. Immediately above that is the button that initiates the audible tone. The middle button cluster is an alphanumeric keypad used for entering zip codes or for entering information for custom plans. The left and right arrows are used for selecting different satellites. The up and down arrows are used for selecting individual transponders on each satellite. The enter button is used in conjunction with selecting different menu items. In the lower right corner we have two LEDs. One is labeled charge and it illuminates yellow when voltage is introduced either AC or DC and that yellow denotes fast charge. Once the meter is significantly charged it will turn green denoting a trickle charge. The lower right LED, the rightmost, is labeled IRD. And when we're connected from the meter to the receiver unit for troubleshooting purposes, as long as the meter detects voltage from the receiver, that IRD will illuminate. After powering up the Super Buddy meter, it goes through a 10 second warm up. While it's going through its warm up, you can see the current version of its field guide, software, and hardware versions displayed. This particular meter has the North American field guide selected. However, if you're in a different region of the world, you can request a field guide for your region. For example, South America, uh, Middle East, Australia, New Zealand. Once the meter's gone through its 10 second warm up, it defaults to its normal run screen. The normal run screen is organized with some soft keys on each side of the display. Starting in the upper left is the system soft key. You use it to select your specific region, the system type, the LNB style, and a multi-switch style if in fact you're using a multi-switch. Beneath the system soft key is the ID soft key. When you've obtained a signal lock on a particular satellite, you can press that ID soft key and it will come back and tell you if ID verified, meaning you are aimed at the satellite that you've selected, or it will say ID failed, at which time the soft key will be replaced with a scan soft key. And if you push the scan soft key, 
it will run through an algorithm whereby it checks different satellites and then tells you which satellite you are receiving. The soft key beneath the ID button is the zip code key. Once you've selected a particular satellite that you're going to try to find, you can push the zip code lookup button and then enter your local zip code and it will give you the magnetic heading, the vertical angle setting for the antenna, as well as the polarity offset for adjusting your L and B rotation. The upper right corner of the display shows the transponder number, the center frequency of that transponder, whether or not it's a vertical or horizontal transponder, and the, and the voltage required to power that. If we had a single polarity LNB selected back in our setup, we would use this upper right soft key to toggle between vertical and horizontal polarities. Below that soft key is the LNB power soft key. It's used to power the LNB as well as to scroll from port to port if in fact we were powering through a multi-switch. And then the bottom soft key, the bottom right soft key, allows you to go to a menu for some different settings. We'll push the LNB power button to power our LNB and we're currently aimed at 97 Intel SAT Americas 5 at 97 degrees. So we see the orbital slot in the upper left corner as well as the name of the satellite across the top of the display, Intel SAT Americas 5. It shows that we're locked with the bold lock status. When we did not have a lock, when our LNB wasn't powered, it said search. But once we obtained the lock, it shows lock. The left bar graph denotes signal level in DBM. The right bar graph denotes signal quality value. We're currently looking at a signal quality value of between 68 and 70 IRD value. The bottom of the display indicates what LNB type we selected in our setup. The lower right hand corner of the display shows our battery symbol and we're showing a full charge right now. On the right signal quality bar graph where we've chosen to display the quality in the IR, IRD value, if we prefer to see it in carrier to noise, we can select that by pressing the menu button, down arrowing to the options, pressing enter, and where IRD is highlighted, if we just hit one of our arrow keys, it switches to carrier to noise, exit out of the setup, menu back to the run mode and now our signal quality value is displayed in carrier to noise rather than the IRD equivalent. Other features in the menu, push our menu, we can choose the voltage and current measurement. I'll push that button and we see that we're currently providing 13 volts to our LNB and it's drawing about 112 to 116 milliamps. Beneath that it shows that the IRD is not providing any voltage. We're not receiving voltage from a receiver so it says under. And in the very bottom display is how much voltage our internal battery has and it shows that it has about 8 volts right here. Back in the run mode I'll demonstrate the zip code lookup. Our zip code here in Indianapolis, Indiana is 46203. I just punch in 46203 and press enter. The meter comes back. It gives me a latitude, a longitude, the azimuth, the magnetic compass heading, the elevation that we need to set our antenna. 
and the skew or polarity offset for the L and B rotation. Back in the normal run mode, I'm going to push the ID button to verify that indeed we are receiving the 97 degree satellite and it gives us ID verification so I can hit OK. Now to demonstrate the scan feature of the ID button I'm going to intentionally select the wrong satellite. We know we're receiving the 97 degree bird right now but I'm going to intentionally go over to the 91 degree satellite and in fact the meter shows that we're not locked but it does show a signal level. So if in fact I knew I was receiving a satellite signal but I didn't know which one as is the display shows in this case I can push the ID button it's checking it comes back and tells us that our ID failed so now I can push the scan button and the meter is testing different satellites to determine which satellite signal it is receiving. So it's going through that process right now. It comes back and tells us ID verified. I push the OK soft key and it takes us to the 97 degree bird which we knew we were receiving but we tried to fool it when we did the ID check on the 93. Other menu items is there is a manual to a manual tune mode that would allow us to enter specific parameters on a transponder that might be secret or not published but that we know and that we wanted to do some testing. Beneath that is the voltage amperage check which you you can select by going to that mode and pressing enter or you had the the uh, VI soft key which we demonstrated earlier. Beneath that is the OP mode. Those of you that are familiar with direct way installs very likely have experience using a little uh, pointing aid device called an OP and in that mode if we were connected to a direct way or a HughesNet internet install uh, the meter will act like the OP does. And then beneath that is the bit error rate, first checking the bit error rate. And then beneath that is back to the run mode. That concludes a brief description of our meter's display and functions.